knowing this is the last ride, I definitely want to cherish those moments. Being able to look at the bigger picture, that'll be a huge part of what I remember going forward. It's just the way of life that we've grown up with, so it's like, you know, some people couldn't do this live in the middle of nowhere, but we like it. I mean, my grandpa had it in 1916, we, he started this. So it's like, my grandpa had it and our families had it, and I want them to, you know, learn how to try to do things right. I know I don't do everything, but maybe they can keep it going, so. Just hope it's not too wet, not too hot. We live way out in the boonies, and even like going into town, 20, 30 minutes to go into town to go to school and stuff like that, it's all part of the, part of the trip, I guess you'd say. Well, we had to push those calves quite a ways. We probably went five miles and in the mud a little bit. And then we try to do six, 700 calves in a few days. I, I really enjoy it. My dad doesn't even have like a full-time hired hand to help him. And he's got close to a thousand cows. So, it means hard work. I think it shapes your, your values. Um, growing up in a place like this, you learn from a young age what it takes to get get work done out here, uh, how it is to work hard. Uh, nothing's given to you easy and it takes a lot of work. As he enters his final season, Brody has without question left his mark. The two-time All-American who finished his junior season with a team-high 13 and a half tackles for loss and 10 sacks also finished top of his class. Not an easy task as a mechanical engineer. He's a guy that's uh, driven in a way that, that few are, and that's, that's in everything he does. Well, when I first got the job, uh, you know, Brody was one of the first uh, athletes, I guess, that, that caught my eye. And Brody was a, a, a younger guy, hadn't played at all at that point, so he was an unknown as far as that goes, but definitely a guy that, uh, you know, his size, his frame um, stood out. And then getting a chance to, to sit down with him through that first stretch when I was here and, and hear his story, you know, growing up on a, on a ranch, um, having to travel like he did, uh, to just to play football um, over in Roundup. 
his basketball exploits. No quit. Brody Greeby racing down the length of the court, hammers it home. Greeby had six. His commitment, his development, um, you know, in, in my time, you know, over the three years has been tremendous. Talk about Coach B and what he has meant to you in your time here. It's a pretty special relationship, I would say. He's always the calm, cool-headed guy that has our best interest in his heart. And he might be not saying the most, but when he does say something, you better be listening because he's going to give you some good stuff. I did see a video of him on Twitter one time throwing his headset, so that was pretty funny. That was about one of the most mad I've ever seen him, but yeah, he, he's meant the world to to me in this senior group. In this changing world of college football, you know, in the transactional nature of it, uh, guys like Brody are what you do this for. Brody's 100% committed to being a Bobcat, and he has been since the day that he made the decision to come back to Montana and be a part of this team. The introduction of the NCAA early signing period a couple years ago means college football programs get early Christmas presents, and Montana State got just that today, inking former Melstone star Brody Greeby. Greeby was one of the most sought-after Treasure State recruits as a senior last year, but chose to go to an East Coast prep school this semester instead. That decision did two things, got him offers from almost every Ivy League university, and switched his focus from basketball to football. The Class C thing, I think, has been a struggle because Class C or small town kids always get, you don't play enough people, you don't, you haven't proven yourself. Brody's been told that his whole life. People saying, you come from a Class C town, you come from a small town, you don't play good enough talent, you aren't going to be good enough, you can't, you won't be able to play at the next level. That happens to a lot of Montana kids, and that's the reality of what it is. But I decided I was going to go to the East Coast and try something out and see what I can make myself. I think personally that was a critical um, point for him. Um, I look at it as a time where he uh, bet on himself. I wouldn't change it for the world, but it wasn't for me. I had a great experience out there and knew I wanted to be back home. And that experience showed me exactly what I wanted. He's known from day one that this is where he wanted to be and, and he, will, he will be a bobcat till the day he dies. It's the end of May. And for many ranchers, that means one thing. It's branding season. For the ranching, farming community, the spring is a busy, busy time. People are um, seeding, we're branding, we're calving out calves here through March, um, and now we're branding them. Uh, this is the time of year we get all that done so we can send our bulls out, um, get our cows bred up for the next year. For the third straight year, it's an open invite for teammates to come to the family ranch in Melstone to help brand more than 700 calves. A lot of his buddies wanted to experience some of this. I saw Melstone for the first time and I was like, holy shit, there's only, there's only a couple houses here. I thought it'd be a little bit bigger. Then this year it's getting bigger and they get bigger and we have to feed them, and <laughs> but it's fun. You're gonna have to flip them all the way over, okay? Ready? Pull, wait, pull it that way. My job, especially right at the beginning of the branding is all it is is make sure nobody gets hurt. That's what my dad says. Nobody better be hurt when you're there out here. I'm like, okay, well, that's not the easiest. We got horses going by. Excuse me, buddy. People with needles, knives. Move your leg, snake, unless you want a shot in the nuts. I'm just running around trying to not to get anybody hurt, trying to keep calves on the ground. And, but it's a fun time, and they figure it out eventually. Yeah, that, my words kind of bit me in my butt. I got to say, yeah, it's, it's hard, hard work. Yeah. You don't have to censor yourself. I don't have to? No. I can say whatever? Yes. OK, sweet. Yeah, this <laughs> sucks. <laughs> A lot of these guys have been together four or five years, so it's like 
They have such work ethics for football. I mean, they're uplifting. This is this is just something different for them to have fun. They come just to hang out, but I'm like thinking, let's get some work done too. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you're not going to remember the games. You're not going to remember, you know, going to Eastern Washington or Portland State. But, you you, you know, you'll remember, oh, remember when we had branding that year? That was, that was a hell of a time. So, yeah, just cherishing all those moments that outside of football is really what you're going to remember. Being out here with, with the with the boys, just ha having a good time. Soft hands. <laughs> yeah, like I'm, I'm gonna remember this one for like the rest of my life. So. We make a lot of memories, and we do a lot of shit together. And this is one of the funnest things that we get to do together. I think. <laughs> that was a little strong. I love these guys. All these guys, I'm sure, will be coming to my wedding next summer, and I appreciate them coming and helping us. And I'm sure they're glad for the opportunity. Wrong way. <laughs> we'll get done, and probably a month later, they'll be asking me, "When are we branding next year?" Cowboy Orange. So they're bugging me all year, and they always want to come back. Weiser looking to throw, steps up under pressure, and Brody Greeby put him into the turf. Landmark Larry found his spot and a big time sack by Brody Greeby on third. Brody was uh, a Bobcat fan from the beginning. Brody was a typical uh, little boy, very rambunctious, always as long as he had a ball in his hand of any sort, if it was a basketball, football, baseball, he was, he was a happy kid. He was also a very good big brother to Bryce. He always included Bryce, even if Bryce was annoying him. Bryce is, you know, four years, five years younger than him. He never treated him like he was that. Um, and always very protective. I think I was six when, or five when my parents split. So he was really little and we were always together, no matter where it was, if we were going with my mom or coming here or whatever we were doing, we were always together. And that, I think that's why we're so close. Um, when they were in high school, um, during the state basketball tournament, Bro uh, Bryce was an eighth grader and Brody was a, a senior and they were playing Manhattan Christian and Bryce hit a three pointer right going into half. Bryce Greeby for three at the buzzer. Bring it up. Brody was so excited for Bryce and just to see them on the basketball court. Now it's kind of come full circle. Now they're back together on the football field. I'm just thankful I get to play with him and get to be around him all the time. I'm hoping uh, I can get on the field with him this next season. That would be, that's my goal and I'm looking forward to that. I think, like I was saying earlier, just how much time we spend together, um, just working or playing basketball, competing, um, we're both competitive as hell, so <laughs> together. I'm a bit together. older and would beat up on him a little bit, but I think that's made him tougher, you know what I mean? He, uh, I think just being there for him and him being there for me. The backbone of any great team is established and built by those who are committed. 
committed to an ideal of embracing the difficult. No. Committed to the ideal that everything is earned. That if you want to build something great, it starts with the man in the mirror. It's about leadership, commitment, sacrifice, and hard work. If all that can be measured, Brody is the stick. And maybe nothing encapsulates this more than Brody being awarded the team's legacy number 41 jersey for his senior year. A tribute to the 1941 team who lost 13 men in service. And to Big Sky Country becoming the 41st state in the union. To be able to represent this state in this program, to be honored and be put in the same group of guys that have worn it before me is pretty special. I think one thing that's unique about Brody is his mental toughness and his ability to handle competition and pressure. For him, the bigger the moment, the bigger he performs. And so, as a chapter of his football life comes to a close, the cowboy from Melstone, Montana, rides on. He rides for family and friends, for those who came before him and those who will come after him. But most of all, Brody rides for the brand. <laughs>